Hello, my name is Miss Nichols, and this video is on how to um, use a computational spreadsheet to um, create a simulation for texting while driving. But in general, I'm going to show you a lot of the skills that you need to create computational spreadsheets out of uh, Google Sheets. So you hopefully should have this master template for a simulation uh, for texting while driving that your teacher gave you. And there are three tabs on that screen. Um, you're going to want to be in the uh, first tab, which is um, called uh, math practice, actually, is where we're going to be in the first tab. And when you click on that tab for math practice, you should see a bunch of blue boxes and a bunch of yellow boxes and a bunch of words. Um, the left column, which is the descriptions, is something you want to always make sure you have every time you're doing a computational spreadsheet or writing any kind of computer program, which really is what we're doing here, um, that explains what's going on um, in the spreadsheet so that somebody else, like your teacher who's looking at it later on, would be able to figure out what was happening. Um, so you'll notice a bunch of descriptions. I have first number, second number, etc. And later on, when we get to later tabs, we'll also have the units over there because we only want numbers in our cells. Otherwise, we won't be able to graph them or do math with them. So anytime you have a value that needs units, you want to make sure you put that in the um, in the descriptions column. So then I've had uh, two more columns called inputs and calculations. You'll notice inputs have blue cells. OK, so the little squares on these things are called cells. Um, and we have blue cells over here for inputs, so you are allowed to type in numbers for those blue cells. That is a plain old number like 4, okay, 12, whatever it is actually, and we'll come back to that in a minute, um, but that's the only cells that I'm going to let you type in those number, plain old numbers to. Column C here has uh, calculations, and you'll notice that those cells all are yellow. Um, so every time we do a calculation, um, we are going to start our calculation with an equal sign, um, and that tells this program, Google Sheets, that we're going to be doing some math with, um, within that cell. So anything that's yellow needs to have an equal sign, which will make it an equation, and that's true for all three of these spreadsheets. Um, in Google, uh, Google Sheets or, or, Power, or um, Excel, any uh, spreadsheet program that you use, um, as I mentioned, the, the little boxes are known as cells, and each cell has a name. The name of that cell is um, going to be sort of battleshipy, right? We have the column, which is A, B, C, etc., and we have the rows 1, 2, 3. So this first cell right here that I have selected is cell A1, uh, down here this would be cell B4, um, etc. And so knowing the names of the cells is really critical as we get to actually the programming. Uh, the last thing is I've added a column for notes. These are essentially hints as you work through these uh, problems to help you solve them um, on your own. Okay, so we're going to start by typing two numbers into inputs. I'm going to pick my favorite numbers, 12 and 21. I like those numbers. I'm fond of them. Um, and so I can type in plain old numbers because those are inputs. Go ahead and enter the same two numbers on yours as you're going through this. Uh, now we're going to work on some calculations with those numbers. So um, the first thing we're going to do, actually, I'm going to do different numbers. I'm sorry to go back here. Let's do 2 and um, 10. Let's do 2 and 10. Okay, just to make our life a little easier. All right, so we have our numbers 2 and 10 in. Uh, down here in cell C7, we want to add together those numbers. Um, but more importantly, I actually want to add together those cells, not those numbers, because if we change the inputs, I want the math part in the yellow to automatically adjust. So I need to write an equation that says, let's take whatever's in this cell and add it to whatever's in this cell. Um, so the way that equation works, as I mentioned, is you start with an equal sign. And then you are going to either type in the name of the first cell, which would be B4, OK? Um, or you can just click on the cell, which is pretty handy, and it automatically enters the name in B4 for you. So we're going to add together B4 and cell B5. So we just do a plus sign to add. And then we're going to click on B5 or type in B5. And then when you hit Enter, it should add together the values in that cell. You should have a 12 now in this added numbers box. Um, we can use the same process to subtract numbers. So equals um, my B4, which is my first cell, minus sign uh, B5 and hit Enter. And you should have a negative 8 because 2 minus 10 gives you negative 8. And we can do the same thing for the product 
or the um, uh, or the I forget the name for what you call some two numbers that are being divided. But anyways, you can multiply or divide the, the cells as well. Um, as it says in the notes, we use an asterisk, which is shift eight to multiply, or you use this backslash for divide, which is next to the shift key on the bottom under the question mark. So we're gonna say equals B4 times B5, enter in that cell and two times 10 should give you 20. Um, cell 10, we're gonna take the average of those two numbers. And that's something that we wanna know how to do because in physics, we have a lot of variables that are average, right? Average velocity, average acceleration, we need to be able to take the average of two numbers. Um, so you could add them together and divide by two. That's how you find the average, the first one plus the second one divided by two. But there's actually a command built into Excel that makes it even easier. Um, it's called the average or built into sheets, I'm sorry. Um, so the way you do it is you type equals and then you just write the word average and it tells you this right in the notes, right? And then you do a parentheses and then you click on the first number and then you do a comma and then you click on the second number and then you close your parentheses. So doing that will let you um, find the average of two numbers. I know this maybe doesn't feel faster than adding them together and dividing by two, but if you had a whole lot of numbers you're trying to take the average of, uh, more than just two, you can keep adding comma this cell and this cell and this cell and it will save you a lot of time in the long run. So when you hit enter, it'll take the average of two and 10, uh, which should be six, right? The number right in between two and 10. Uh, in physics, we also often need to find the delta, right? We need delta V, delta T, delta, um, delta D sometimes. So um, a note about delta, delta means how much my number changes by, right? So if I start at two and end at 10, uh, the two changed by positive eight to get up to the 10. What I did mathematically is I take my final number and I subtract my initial number. So it's similar to the minus one earlier, except for this time I'm going to do my second number, which is B5, take away what's in B4, and then hit enter. All right. Um, in the next cell, um, I have a little challenge for you, which is to do a more complicated equation four times my initial number. Um, so you can enter in the equation just like it shows right there four times my number one plus my number two, and then divide that thing by my number one times my number two. So you can do all that. And I don't care if you're keeping up with this part because I'm gonna show you a faster way to do it in a minute. Um, but you'll get an answer here, 2.4, but there's a faster way. Um, so if I get rid of that equation, the faster way recognizes that we have little mini equations inside this big equation, right? So inside this big ugly equation we're trying to do, I need this n1 plus n2 value. And I've already done that somewhere else, right? I have added together my first two numbers here in cell C7. So instead of adding them together again, I'm just gonna say four times C7 because that's where I added the numbers together. And then I'm gonna divide by, I need the product of the numbers, n1 times n2, and I have that in C9. So four times C7 divided by C9 gives you the same answer, but with a lot less typing. So what I wanted you to get out of that was that you can do equations on other equations. You can use your calculated cells and calculate with them again later on, which is something that's gonna be really useful as we move forward. Okay, go ahead and click on the next tab, which is the physics practice tab. Um, in this tab, you'll see some inputs as well. Um, and there's kind of a challenge question. Florence Griffith Joyner is one of the fastest humans in history. She has a maximum velocity of 24.3 miles every hour, and she can reach the speed from rest in 10.6 seconds. How many meters does she travel in this time? This is a hard physics problem. This would take you a lot of work um, because it's two equations at least that you have to do. And you also would have to do a conversion because I gave you the speed in miles per hour and you need it in meters per second. So this would take a lot of time on a test. Um, but we're going to write a little simulation that um, that does this for us. So the first thing I want to do is I want to convert my velocity from meters every uh, from miles per hour to meters every second. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little converter. Now you could do this on Google. You could just type it in on Google, but this is going to do it for you automatically inside your spreadsheet. So I want to know how fast is that 24.3 miles every hour. Um, I did look up on Google that every one mile an hour is equal to 0 0.44704 meters every second. So that's going to be a helpful fact that I'm going to use in my conversion. 
So my input is the velocity in miles every hour. I'm going to put in an input of 24.3 because that's Florence uh, Griffith Joyner's velocity. And here in the calculator um, portion, I am going to calculate how many meters a second that is. So for every one meter per second, we need 0.44704, sorry, every one mile per hour, it's 0.44704 meters every second. So my equation is just going to be equal to whatever the value in that cell is times 0.44704. Okay, so that's my conversion equals B6 times 0.44704. And when I hit enter, you'll see, um, whoops, that I have uh, 10.86 um, meters every second. Okay, so now let's get into the physics of the problem. We know that um, a runner or a racer starts at rest in their race. So I'm gonna go ahead and where it says initial velocity for this problem, I'm gonna put in a zero as an input because I know my runner is starting at rest. Um, then here, the question asks, what is uh, the final velocity? Well, we just calculated that. We just found that above and we need it in meters every second. So we're gonna do something kind of interesting. We're gonna write a little mini equation that pulls a value from a different part of my spreadsheet but doesn't change it. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward equation. It just says equals C7, okay? Um, and so this is really useful because when I hit enter, you'll see I get the same number, 10.86, which I could have typed in, but if I change my input, all these things are gonna change together instead of me having to go back and type them in again. So a little mini equation to move the value of one cell to another place or to duplicate the value is just equal the value of that cell. The next cell is to find um, Florence Griffiths Joyner's average velocity, okay? So as we learned in the last page, the way we find average is equals and then the word average, and then you click on your N1, your initial velocity, which is your, your starting velocity, comma, and my final velocity, which is in C11. So I have average of B10, comma, C11, close the parentheses, um, and hit enter, and we should find the average is 5.4, right in between, right? If we started at rest, we ended at 10 meters a second, then my average is somewhere in between, around 5, okay? Uh, we're also going to calculate our delta velocity. So delta is how much your speed changes by. If you start at rest and end at 10, hopefully you can figure out what your speed changes by, but I'm going to have the computer calculate it. I'm going to use my equals, my final velocity, take away my initial velocity, and hopefully it agrees that I changed by 10.86 to get um, to my final velocity. Um, I have a couple more inputs here. What is my initial time and my final time? Well, races always start at zero, so I'm gonna put in an initial time of zero. Um, and my final time, it says up here, is that I reach that speed in 10.6 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 10.6 in there as well. That's my final time. Um, I need to calculate delta T, okay? Delta is always your final, take away your initial. So I'm gonna do equals my final time this time, because I want delta T, take away my initial time, which is zero, and I'll find that for her, um, the delta T or the amount of time the race took was 10.6 seconds. Um, then we're gonna calculate the distance that we traveled. So, the distance equation, uh, the equation with distance in it is V average equals um, delta D over delta T. I'm gonna write that on the board up here. So V average equals delta D over delta T. But this time I want to find the delta D, okay? Uh, so I need to rearrange this equation so it's delta D equals the other things so that I can um, solve for delta D. So I need to get delta D all by itself on one side of the equal sign. Um, you could use cross multiplication. That would be a good step if you're not feeling really comfortable with it. Um, but another way is just realizing that the thing that's keeping the delta D from being all alone right now is this delta T. Uh, and right now we're dividing by delta T. So if I want to get rid of a dividing by delta T, what I can do is I can multiply both sides by delta T. Okay, so I multiply that and I multiply this. Um, and then what happens is it's going to cancel out over here because I have a delta T on the top and the bottom. And I get this new equation that just looks like this, which is delta D equals V average times delta T. Okay. 
So down here on my calculation, I know that delta D is going to equal V average times delta T. So my equation is going to be equals. I need to find my V average, right? Look up here, average velocity and click on the cell that has it in it, which is that guy right there, multiplied by my delta T, which is right here. Okay. So that's the cell C12 times C16, because C12 has my average velocity, C16 has my delta T. You could put them in either order. It's going to give you the same answer. Um, and when you hit enter, you find how far she went. So 57.57 meters. Um, just for fun, we can also calculate average acceleration. Um, our acceleration equation is A average equals delta V over delta T. Okay. And we've already calculated delta V and delta T, so this should be really straightforward. Um, it's going to be equals in that cell. I need to find my delta V, which is here, right? So C13, or click on the cell. And I want to divide by delta T, which is down here, and click on C16. And then when you hit enter, you find her acceleration. Um, the cool thing about a simulation, and this is why we're doing this, is that if you've done it right and you did all your equations without cheating on the equations and just typing in the values, we can now compare Florence Joyner, uh, Griffith Joyner to us, for example. So we can switch the inputs and the calculations are going to continue to output. Um, so let's say I went out running. Um, and I found out that my maximum velocity is not 24.3, but my maximum velocity is uh, 15, okay, uh, miles every hour, which probably is too fast for me anyway, but and you may, some of you runners might know what your maximum velocity is. Um, when I change that input, okay, and hit enter, right away you'll notice that all of these things change because they're all linked to that cell originally, right? My calculation is converting that 15 into meters every second is 6.74. And down here we said this cell is equal to that cell. So when this cell changed, this cell changed as well. My average velocity calculates from that cell. And so when that cell changed, the new average velocity becomes 3.36. And my delta velocity changes as well. Um, down here, I'm going to assume I'm, I'm racing with her as well, but my final time is probably not 10.6 seconds. My final time is probably something like 25 seconds because I'm much slower. Um, so when I calculate, when I change my inputs, you'll notice that all of the outputs change instantly. So if you were a track coach, for example, you could go through every runner on your team and really quickly um, run their values through the simulation and get um, how far did they run, um, what was their average acceleration. Mine is obviously much, much slower than, um, than Flojo. So that's kind of a cool thing to do. Um, so that's all of the skills that you need to create the simulation are in this spreadsheet. If you followed along and got all of your calculations, then if you get stuck later on, you should be able to look back at the spreadsheet and figure out what to do um, on any of these calculations. So when you click to the next tab on the spreadsheet, um, we've got all these inputs. Uh, if you were not in class the day we took the data for the inputs, let me tell you what values to put in just for fun. Um, let's put in a distance to person. So the idea is that we're trying to figure out if a driver who's texting while they drive would run into um, a pedestrian who is crossing in front of them. So picture yourself as the pedestrian, picture a car coming. How far away would you feel safe crossing in front of that car? I'm going to say something like 50 meters. Okay, so let's put that in. Um, down here, uh, we're now moving to the driver's perspective. And the question is, uh, how fast is that car moving? Okay, so if you picture yourself driving a car in a situation where you might want to text, um, you can uh, imagine how, what road you're on, what is the speed limit? Maybe the speed limit's 30 for a typical road. So I need, those, I need that 30 in meters every second. So a fast and easy way to figure out what that 30 is in meters a second is to go back to your physics practice page and say, hey, uh, how, how many meters every um, second is 30 miles per hour? Okay, so that's my car. My car goes at 30 miles per hour, that's 13.4 meters a second. So in your simulation, you want to make sure you enter it in meters every second because we're doing everything in meters and seconds. So initial velocity of the car, let's put in 13.4. That's the car that's going 30. Um, in this blue cell, we need to figure out how long does it take you to read and respond to a text message. So we did some practice in class. Um, I think kids came up with give or take, let's say 10 seconds, that's fine. 
Um, so we'll put a 10 in there to like read a message and, and reply to it. You guys are pretty fast. Um, the next portion talks about once you've looked up and need to like start slamming on the brakes to, to, um, to stop the car, how much time does that take? Um, and we had a little simulation we did in class, but let's put about 0.25 seconds in there for that. So that's a pretty fast reaction time. That's a pretty fast, fast person played a lot of video games, really. Um, and then we're going to go to the last section, which is the car moving while braking. So ideally your car comes to a rest. So your final velocity is going to be zero. Uh, this value I looked up online, um, is a typical acceleration for a car when they're slowing down. So that's a value that you can just leave in there as negative 10.228. So your job now is to fill out all of these yellow cells so that you eventually down at the bottom can answer this question, is the person okay while that person was texting while driving? Um, every single one of those yellow cells must start with an equal sign. Um, and if you don't do that, then when Miss Nichols or Miss Brown or Miss Wonder or Mr. Wing goes back and changes any of the values in your spreadsheet, um, the calculations aren't going to keep up with it and your simulation is not going to work. So make sure on your yellow cells, you um, start every one with an equal sign. I gave you a little hint on the first one. Um, during that distracted interval while you're texting, right, your car is not slowing down yet. It's still driving. So my hint is that the, the equation for the first one uh, the first yellow box should be just equals b6 because the final velocity of the car when you're done texting should be the same as the initial velocity of the car when you started texting because the car hasn't started slowing down yet so i hit enter and that's going to be 13.4 um but the reason it's important to do that equation instead of just typing 13.4 is because if i change my car to a faster car um, i want this to change automatically without me having to um, go back in and do more typing. So that's a hint that got you started. Um, hopefully you can start looking back in your spreadsheet or looking back at the video to figure out how to fill out the rest of these yellow cells for your simulation. Thanks for watching.